Hey you guys, it's Moonlander back with another horror movie review. And today we're going to be looking at Witchboard from 1986. Linda has made contact. Linda, unlock the door! David is here. And he's playing for real. It isn't a game anymore. Witchboard. Don't play it alone. Now this movie's written and directed by uh, Kevin Teeny, and uh, he also directed Night of the Demons. And this movie stars. Tawny Catan, who you might recognize from the White Snake videos. And it also has a Stefan Nichols, who has been on Days of Our Lives since 1985 to today. And uh, when you watch this movie, he seems just like somebody that would act on a soap opera. <laughs> and it also has Todd Allen, who has a really recognizable face. And uh, when you look at his filmography, he has been in a ton of movies and TV shows. So this movie starts off at a house party where a guy brings a Ouija board. Which, uh, thanks to this movie, I now learned it's not pronounced Ouija, it's pronounced Ouija. <laughs> so anyway, he brings the board out and uh, he wants to attempt to make contact with the spirit of a young boy he's been talking to. And they end up making contact to somebody pretending to be the boy. David, are you here? Can you hear me? It began at a party. And uh, as the night goes on, he leaves the board at the house and the wife of the husband that are living in this house uh, continues to use this board alone in attempts to contact this little boy. And as the movie goes on, you find out she's not making contact with the little boy. She's making contact with the evil spirit. So the things I liked about Witchboard is I learned things about the Ouija board that I have never heard or seen in other movies. Now, they say in this movie that you should rest the board on your knees uh, and it helps make better contact with the spirits. And I suppose that makes sense. And they added in that you wanted a clean system, uh, you know, and it would be best if it was a man and a woman using the board. Now, if any of this stuff is true in real life I don't know but it was fun stuff that was put in the movie that I've never seen other movies mention whenever they're using the Ouija board in this movie it does show their hands and the board uh, a lot and uh, they do quite a bit of moving and it does look pretty good I notice on a lot of movies uh, that have a Ouija board in them. A lot of times they switch to showing like the actors faces and whatnot. But this one they actually had to act like a spirit was moving the planchette. And uh, they do it quite a bit. And I thought it looked pretty good. And I would also say that this movie had some pretty cool camera work in it. I, I really enjoyed some of the shots that were done with this movie. And I will say I did enjoy the acting and writing for this movie. Uh, it 
was quite a difference to a lot of the horror I watch these days. Like, I think everyone in this movie, for the most part, was a good actor. And uh, the writing's really enjoyable. So the backstory with the characters in this movie is actually interesting and it makes you actually care about the characters. Uh, and I enjoyed uh, the story of this movie. And the fact that you actually have an interesting story about the characters in the movie makes you somewhat care about what happens to them and uh, how the story is progressing. And I definitely like the 80s charm in this movie. Uh, from between looking at people's hairdos to the music they use for this movie. Now during the opening credits they have some pretty cool synth music going on. And then it uh, shows this house party and it's the same music but a more intense level. And I thought that was cool. And uh, I overall just enjoyed the music that was in the movie. And I would say that my favorite performance in this movie was by Tawny Katan. And I just thought she did a good job. Uh, I, I mean, I just didn't imagine she was actually an actress, but she does well in this movie. And there's even a nude scene where she punches herself out of a shower, uh, if you're uh, interested in that sort of thing. Okay, so the things I didn't like about Witchboard is they found this really creepy guy to play the evil spirit, but they barely show him. Uh, they don't really use him much at all, and I thought they should have used him more. And while I did enjoy Tony Katan's performance in this movie, there was a part towards the end where she is possessed by this evil spirit and uh, I just thought that it was a little goofy. I, I didn't really care for that part. And also they have a psychic in this movie um, and she is almost too goofy at parts. Uh, I see a vision. What is it? Me. In your car, going home. <laughs> Just some more psychic humor. <laughs> I mean, I did enjoy her character, but it was pushing the limits of being just too goofy, I thought. So my final thoughts on Wishboard is I really did enjoy this movie, but I would say it was almost like half a horror movie and half a drama. Um, it really relies on uh, story and uh, writing and uh, interactions between all of these characters. And it is well done. Uh, it's just not much of a horror movie, really. Now, there are sequels, and at least the second one is written and directed by the same guy. And I do want to watch them. I, I overall would say I liked Witchboard, and I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, Alright, you guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next review. Come on, Brandy, let's hit the musky dust. T-T-F-N.